And thank you so much for joining me. Good I'm not going to ask you why the, why Ned Bank rally today, but overall, no. financials uh, in the spotlight, I suppose. Come on, helping give me to, a chance. Oh, so, so why value is Ned Bank rally today? Value being recognized. Value being recognized. Okay, there okay. we go. That's your moment. <laughs> Uh, yep. I don't think there's anything specific there. In fact, I'm quite sure there's not. Um, I, I think that it's just that uh, investors as a whole are looking for value. It's not easy to find. It's not easy uh, to find stocks which haven't been overbought uh, in, the, in the last few months. And so, you know, uh, just in anticipation of results coming out, maybe there's a bit of anticipation there too. Why do you think uh, the financial sector specifically today is uh, stronger? Because there's been so much concern around financials. Uh, you know, this whole Barclays debacle is yes. ongoing. The implications, the repercussions of that still at the forefront. Citigroup coming out with the results. Profits falling back there overall. Uh, where does this put local financials? I, I think we're disconnected with the global markets, with the international, uh, with the international banks, and I think there's an acknowledgement that South Africa has not been involved in this LIBOR price fixing. It couldn't have been. It's not part of our makeup of our money markets, and and I think that's just a little bit of hey, there was no reason to sell them down. Uh, let's get back to, as I said, the fair value level, and I think that that's a, a bit of investment flow trickling back into that sector. You wonder how how much longer though, absolutely is going to be a laggard and if we're going to see a recovery in that stock price. Maria Ramos clearly coming out, stating yes. the position of the bank, stating that the bank, uh, you know, is is solid. It's, it, it got integrity and credibility in trying to restore reputation there. What are your thoughts on the APSA front? Um, I think as a business as a whole, yes, of course it's got a, a, a strong base, but there is no doubt at all. It was a surprise when those uh, last results came out, the warning came out, and, uh, and you know, uh, I think investors memories tend to last a bit longer. You don't get over that all in a rush. There's no doubt, there's no problem about the integrity of the bank, it's very top management, and the, the close watch that there is by the central bank over all of the banking sector. So yes, it, it will under, continue to underperform, but it will bottom out, I think, in the near future. Let's talk about retailers, let you off the hook on the banking <laughs> front okay. slightly. 12 month uh, t report coming through, operational review coming through from ShopRite, uh, yes. total turnover up by 14.4% to 82.7 billion Rand. Uh, that's good growth, yes. surely. Oh. I mean, that's, yes. that's strong numbers coming through from ShopRite, especially out of Africa. A absolutely. It just goes show, to show where the big opportunity is. And good for Whitey Besson. He was the first amongst the major supermarkets uh, groups to have recognized that. And he really got established, got them well established. And I think they're seeing better margins outside, uh, outside South Africa than inside South Africa, where it is cutthroat competition. And because they established themselves there, perhaps they have a better cost base. I think, uh, yes, they're, they're reaping those rewards now. Do you think Absa Capital was right to come out and and increase the price target to 165 Rand to shop right? Well, there's a big increase there. but uh, From 102 Rand yes, price target. That's, yeah. that's a heck of a big increase. That, that maybe is a bit, uh, a, a bit, bit overestimating the potential, but it does say that they recognized where the big potential is in the, that retail sector, and I think that's the right direction. I think maybe just a little bit over optimistic. I mean, overall, though, I mean, they've seemed very bullish on yes. the retail space right now. Coming out, raising price targets for Fashini, Mr. Price, Pick and Pay, you know, Woolies, even uh, all the all the top performers so far, and yes. they've already come out and, and stated their position clearly. Do you think that uh, investors out there should should buy into this uh, optimism? Well, should they be buying at all right now? Because yeah. that, that, that is the question. Never mind into the optimism on the retail sector. I'm in the uh, wait and see sort of uh, area just at the moment. And I think that uh, accumulating some, some cash flow is probably a good idea right now as far as the uh, buying in. At what is a relatively high level, I've got my doubts. However, what we must remember is if we look at PEs on the market as a whole, they're not overextended. So you could say that it's maybe it's justifiable to do rand cost averaging. I don't like that. I prefer to look at better uh, individual value as they will become available. Is there, any, is there any value in the retail space right now in, in terms of attractive valuations? Because we know the sector has performed so strongly this year and of course at the end of last yeah. year. 
Well, is it going to be hard knocked back? The answer is probably not. So the question is, if you haven't got a stake in the retail sector in your portfolio, you need it and must start and keep on. Where's uh, the best entry that. point, though? I mean, any views well, on which stock specifically? ShopRite would always be my favorite. Even though its valuation is really quite extended, they keep on justifying it. Yep. So I think one must go stick with the winner. So when they come out with numbers and they show you that they continue to, to, to be able to increase their earnings, especially in Africa where that's, that strategy is really starting to pay dividends, Go and with them. Just, yeah, go with go with the the momentum there. That's right. June retail sales in the United States came down oh, 0.5 yes. percent. That was a su surprise to the market, and we're looking at retail sales figures coming out this week. Yes. Uh, your assessment of of those the outlook for those numbers, the health of the consumer in South Africa, head in of South NPC? Africa. Well, uh, the April retail sales data they always come out a bit late, but anyway, the April retail sales data showed just a one percent year-on-year increase. Uh, the May one now comes from a higher base a year ago because of the holidays that we had at that stage and I think uh, I think that that is means that it's not really a true refer a true comparison if one averages it over three months it will show an improvement not quite as exciting as the one off that we saw in May but uh, but you know it's going to be better um, I am nervous about consumer spending in South Africa I think there's a lot of concern about high unemployment still relatively high debt loads and I think that uncertainty in both the global and the, the, the local outlook is going to s slow it down. So Reuters uh, has been doing a poll yes. and uh, their latest poll is on commodities. So let's go back okay. to the commodity space because that's uh, where we saw gold miners falling back specifically yes. today. Uh, looking at that poll, expectations are for gold to average $1,685 an ounce this year. Um, that's coming back slightly from previous yes. forecast. Um, and BNP Paribas analysts saying that the, the factor that is going to keep gold stronger this year is going to be monetary easing from central banks across the board and the increased likelihood of quantitative easing three this year in the states uh, any reason to buy gold stocks at this point well let's start with gold bullion as it as, as on its own yeah and i think what we're seeing now is gold is no longer looked on as a hedge against risk it's now a risk investment on its own if there's going to be uh, liquidity pumped into the system gold will benefit purely on that front and i think that uh, yes uh, it, it's it has come back quite a lot so maybe we're seeing it around about fifteen to sixteen hundred dollars, a base level forming. Gold and then stocks. as far as the shit. And then as, okay. as far as those gold stocks go, because as I said, you know, Anglo Gold Ashanti down seven tenths of a percent today, uh, but all the gold miners in negative territory, harmony the worst hit. I think that if the gold price stays where it is, it'll justify higher prices on the gold stocks themselves. Thank you so much for coming Thank in. You. Ian Crickshanks, head of uh, Treasury Strategic Research at Nedbank Capital.